wonderful surface that's almost kind of like eggshell or linen. Um, and canvas, I also like working on this a lot, but it has a give when you uh, touch it with the brush. And wood panels don't. They're very, everything kind of lays right on top of the panels. So I really um, enjoy working, working on panels. Um, there are three areas that I want to talk about with my work today um, that, that relate to my work, which are beauty, conflict, and passion. So the first one, which is beauty, um, it's interesting because with my work, they, they all start with these moments, these kind of uh, beautiful moments that I see in the city. So I do work for my reference photos, and all of these, all of these paintings started out as a moment in Beauty. So I, I see beauty everywhere, um, and I, I constantly want to, uh, for some reason, to trigger something in me where I, I feel like I need to paint it. Um, and so there I, I'm constantly taking reference photos. I go through my photos and um, determine which ones will be paintings. So you know, there's I take thousands of photos, so they they don't all make the cut, but the ones that do. Um, to me, they, they represent the, the best of the lot. Um, I paint in square format, which started a few years ago. I would say probably 2012, I was working for my Instagram photos. So the, the images were a little bit more filtered, um, kind of that Instagram type of a look. Um, and at the time, Instagram was square format photos only. So that's where the squares started. And since then, I've really enjoyed working in squares. Um, it provides a constraint for me to work in with the composition that also enables a kind of freedom. So there's, there, there, is, there can be freedoms within working with constraints, and that's um, something that I really enjoy. I've, I've gotten used to cropping my images and um, all of that right on my phone in, in the square format, and that's where the images and leave what I just really think is important. So I usually crop out um, cars and figures. I never include figures in my work, even though I love figurative work. But um, with, with the, the relationship that is established with the figure, we usually see the figure and create a story for that person. When there is no figure in the work, we become the figure and insert ourselves into the painting and create a story for ourselves. So I love figurative work, I just, I just don't include them with, with my own work. Um, so that's, that, um, so I want to talk a little bit about this piece, this moment, this was uh, driving, there's a connected freeway between the 101 and the 5, and I take that road a lot, and driving, um, driving over that, there was this gorgeous moment of like a sunset that was so beautiful, and it really, Inspired me. I knew I, I knew I was going to have to paint it. So that was um, an example of kind of where these moments come from. A lot of them are on the, on the freeway, you know, now in, in LA and Southern California. We spend a lot of time on the road, and um, so that's that's uh, one of the good things about our commutes are that there's um, well for me anyway. I, I'm constantly inspired, and I see so much beauty out there. Um, and a lot of these images came earlier in the year when we were having the El Nino, kind of a weather patterns. We didn't get a lot of rain, but we did get a lot of gorgeous cloud formations. And that's unusual for us. We don't always get that like other parts of the country. So that's where a lot of these reference images uh, came from. For example, this piece, which is called Fermenta, which is the Spanish word for storm. This also had, um, was during the El Nino period, um, and we got those, those kind of gorgeous cloud formations. One other thing that's interesting about beauty, uh, one of my favorite artists, Brian Rudenberg, recently said that beauty is a form of protest. And I think that's very interesting in the sense that um, there's so much conflict and trouble going on in the world right now. You know, violence and you know, lots of troubling things that, go, that are going on. And, and one thing that he said is that the best way to combat pain and suffering is to make something beautiful. 
and show it to another human being. So I think that's, that's very interesting in the sense that I've never really considered my work political. In fact, to me, personally, it's almost been anti-political. I've been more focused on what's beautiful to me and, and kind of sharing that with everybody. But um, in a sense, I think if you're making beautiful objects and sharing them with people, there is some politics. In that. There is a, it is a form of protest. Um, so that was interesting. Um, so I would like to move on to conflict a little bit. Um, conflict, you know, they, there's, it's been said that there is no art without conflict. And I think that that's really true. Um, and so I want to talk about a couple of different areas where that comes up. So there's conflict in the studio. So um, a couple examples of that, like for example, this, this painting. Um, when I was painting it, I, I work in layers, so my paintings all come together in layers. In fact, all of these paintings were, I was working on them all at the same time. Um, I did all the reference drawings for them, and then the paintings, they, I work in layers so that I can uh, move on to other pieces while paintings are drying, paintings take time to dry, and also just so I can, I can keep busy. Um, so there's, you know, the, the conflict that happens in the studio is, you know, there's always, there's Position, color, texture, line, shape, all the issues that artists deal with as far as uh, pulling together the composition. And this piece, when I was working on it, um, there, I know, a lot of times in shadows I use a lot of purples and blues, the kind of cool colors that we normally associate with shadows. But for this piece, it wasn't working, and I couldn't really figure out why. But eventually, what I determined is that what it really was brown. So the color notes in this piece are brown, gold, and blue. And most of these darker areas, there's a lot of brown and not a lot of uh, cool colors that you can use for this. So that's an example of where the conflict, it, it's, it's, it's almost like, you, it's, it's a constant struggle. So it's like, it's like um, the, the paintings are always, like when you have a wood panel, it's completely perfect until you make the first mark on it. And as soon as you make a mark on it, the problems begin. It's, you know, you've got to work with the composition, the line, um, shape, color. Color is really important to me. It's probably the most important part of my work. So, um, then there's also the emotion conflict, which is an interesting part of the work that I don't really normally talk about, but I figured it's important to bring it in because it's a real part of the process. I think that um, for me personally, colors have a lot of emotional impact. So when I'm working on my pieces, they take a lot out of me in the sense that I really put a lot of work and uh, a lot of myself into the paintings. Um, so an example of how that plays out is that, like for example, darker paintings are more difficult for me emotionally even though I love them when they're done. It's almost like a, I don't know, it's almost like you always love your children even if it was a difficult pregnancy. <laughs> it's like I, I feel like they're, they're difficult uh, to produce, but then I love them in the end. So I like to move around with different color palettes because um, they really do have kind of an emotional, psychological impact on me when I'm producing them. And then the last piece I want to talk about with conflict is this piece, which is interesting because this piece has been in production for three years. It was originally supposed to be part of my first show with Skidmore, uh, I think in 2014 or so. Um, and it didn't work out. It didn't, I, I did all large paintings at that time. And for whatever reason, this painting didn't quite make, it wasn't working out at the time. And so I, set it aside. My next show, which was last year, I was working on all smaller panels about that size, so I didn't include it in that. And this year, I brought it back out on my easel, and my painting style has changed a little bit over the years, and it was, it felt like the right time. So I brought it back out, I had some amazing sessions in the studio, where the color, everything was just happening, it was, it was working. And so I was really excited to bring this into this, this show and, and complete the painting and I was, I was thrilled actually when it was um, 
when it was done. And then, and the, the last area I wanted to talk about is uh, time conflict. So there can be time constraints with, with working. Um, and it's, it's, it's always like a, you know, I pull, I, for example, definite. So initially this show was going to be 19 paintings. And I had all 19 drawings done, I had all the panels done, everything, you know, had the plan. All the, everything planned out. And at a certain point it became clear that wasn't going to happen. I was going to have to make some decisions about paintings that were not going to make the show. And it was a difficult process for me because I had already had everything planned out. Um, but in the end, I feel like it was the right thing to do. Even if I had gotten all 19 paintings done, it's important, I think, sometimes to edit yourself. And what happened is I ended up with an edited selection of work that I feel like worked really well together so that those additional five paintings weren't even necessary to the point that even if I had gotten them completed, I don't feel like so it's almost like the body of work had taken on its own kind of um, life, and I was making decisions for it, but uh, it was also making its own decisions in a way. Um, so I was really happy with the work that ended up. That I ended up with 14 paintings, and they worked well together, and I was, I was thrilled about that. Um, so that's a little bit about the conflict part of it. The time constraints can be difficult. I know my partner David has felt those constraints, you know, it's, it's, um, I'm always in the studio and I miss out on a lot of events. So the question is, why, why, why would I do that to myself? You know, why wouldn't I be happier with a 9 to 5 and just, you know, living a, a comp more le less conflict in my life? And that brings me up to the third thing I want to talk about, which is passion. So I think we are lucky if we're able to find something that we're really passionate about in life. I think that a lot of times um, people don't, you know, I, I, and, and um, the, the good thing is I am passionate about my work. So in the end, you know, there, there's the beauty, the conflict, and then I feel like this, a painting to me is like water or like breathing. It's, it's a necessary part of who I am and of my identity. And so I feel like um, it is worth it. You know, that's, that's at the end of the day, these paintings, I put a lot of myself into my work. And um, I feel like they are, um, they are an important part of who I am and, and my identity. And I wouldn't change that for anything, even with all of the conflict and, and everything else. So yes, it takes a lot, a lot out of me, and yes, I wouldn't have it any other way. I think it's exactly where I need to be, um, and and so I guess that's an introduction to me and my work. Um, does anyone have any questions? Or yes. Now you say you work from photography in yes. a way. Uh, yes. Is it very literal? Sure, that's a good question. Yes, I work for photography. Um, and so if, if it, is it literal? Do I look, literally work from the photos? Or is it just kind of a little bit more of a representation? Um, more on the representation side of things. I don't work literally. Um, I, I work for my photos because it's, it's, especially these sunset areas, it's almost impossible to paint plein air when, you're, you know, when the light changes so quickly. Um, but I don't consider myself a photorealist because I think sometimes what works in a photograph doesn't work in a painting. So that's a little bit different. Um, I edit out a lot if, if there are things that I don't want in the photo. Um, and I was trained as a traditional painter. So in a, in a lot of ways, I am very traditional. You know, I, I do um, drawings. They all start out with drawings, underpaintings, um, you know, in kind of like the traditional way that a painter painter life, um, but I don't, I'm not married to the past either, you know, I feel like technology is an important part of my work, you know, um, 
even though I, I tend to be a very traditional painter. So I'm not, I don't consider myself a photorealist, but I don't hide that I work with photos either. You know, I feel like it, it is an important part of the process. Photography for me is almost like sketching. It's like I see so many gorgeous things out there in the world all the time that it's, it's almost overwhelming. And so for me, the way to kind of hone that in is to, I, I take a lot of reference photos, and then I go through my photos and kind of determine um, what's, what's going to make the cut as far as in my studio. Does it work up being a collage of photography in some cases? Sometimes. You know, sometimes. And I've even been considering working, getting a large monitor in my studio and just working from a monitor instead of actually printing out the photos. Um, you know, and even taking short video clips, so it's a little bit more like working from life. The advantage to working from life is that the life changes so quickly, everything changes, you know. Um, so I bring that into my work because I'm aware of that and I've worked a lot from life. Um, with photography, everything has equal importance. So you, you look at a photograph and we're able to scan the whole image in a way that we don't really see. When, when we look out on the landscape or when we look at people, we see um, we look in their eyes or we see something that's important to us in the distance. You know, we don't see in the same way that when we look at a photograph. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that it's, it's I, I, some, I have worked with collage style before, and also I bring, um, I guess what I'm really trying to do is, in a way, bring these gorgeous moments that I experience for whatever reason, they, I have the need to recreate them. And it's not to say that I think my work is beautiful, but rather my work is where I find beauty. I have to go looking for it. And, and it's a process. I have to pull it out of me. It's not always easy. Um, you know, that, so it can be a struggle. It can be, you know, very real struggle. Late hours in the studio, you know, just uh, working and just, um, you know, it's, it's definitely, it's a struggle. <laughs> but then at the end, I'm really happy with, you know, with, uh, I know my work is done when I feel like a moment of where everything is kind of like singing. You know, everything is, um, just feels right. And uh, going back to your photography question, like for example, with this piece, um, you know, with architecture, I treat architecture a lot differently than I treat the sky. So with architecture, I like to flatten the shapes and create, um, you know, most of these shapes are solid colors. So they're, they're just, which isn't uh, how it would naturally be. There's a lot of shading and stuff. Some of them have shading, but a lot of the shapes are just flat colors. So with architecture, I like to kind of bring that in together so that they're color notes like almost like notes of music so that when it creates a whole it's more of a uh, it's kind of like singing to me and that's when i know it's done is when then when i feel like everything is working in the sense where i don't have any it's like the struggle is over you know it's like i feel like it's, i've worked it out and i'm happy with it and that's um that's where you know, anyway i answered to, to me that that was stand up Thank you. You know, I really like working for architecture, or working, you know, architecture in my work, um, and flat planes of color. You know, even like a piece like this, where these are all flat planes, but it, uh, if you look closely, these are different colors. So, for example, this shape is like a navy kind of blue, and this shape has a lot of purple in it. Um, there's reds in the background. So, even with dark colors, I like to increase the variation so that things move and kind of, um, so it's not a static kind of flat image. Um, but I love working from architecture. Um, you know, and it's very different than the sky. You know, the sky is, I feel, a little bit more freedom to kind of explore and it's more organic and uh, it's a little bit more um, fun, kind of. Not that architecture isn't fun, but I don't know, it's a little bit more free, I guess, is the right word, because I love working with architecture too. Um, but this, this series did have a big focus on, on the sky, and I, I guess that's what was inspiring me earlier in the year when I, I gathered my reference photos to plan the series. Yes, Mike. I have a question.
question about um, your skies and, and color. Um, when I've seen your posts on Instagram and Facebook of the palette, it seems that you'll, you'll mix like, it looks like 18 different pinks. Yes. So, so how, do you, how do you arrive at your color? How do you use color? How do you think about color? Sure, that's a really good question. Um, the question is, how do I think about color and use it in my work? Um, color is the most important thing to me, personally. More important than the imagery is the color. Um, even though the imagery provides the color, um, you know, so they're related, but at the end of the day, that's what inspires me the most and what I'm most passionate about. So when I, um, like for example, this piece, which you know, you might say the main color note is like white, for example. Um, there is actually a lot of color. It starts up here with blue, there's a green in here, um, it ends up in pinks down here. So what I do is I mix a lot of colors and I use them all. I, I, I put a lot of color into the work, even if it doesn't end up being there. In the end, um, it gets blended, blended out right on the panel. Um, all of the colors are mixed. You know, I, I don't ever use anything right out of the tube, so they're all mixed and they're all intentional. Um, I, I definitely um, am making decisions, conscious decisions with, with color when I'm using it. Um, so yeah, I do mix a lot of colors. I pull colors, when I'm you know, working from these reference photos, I pull colors out of the images. And I can kind of see what colors are there, what colors are, um, and actually just in the natural environment, I'm constantly doing that. You know, I see a sunset, and I'm like, what am I looking at? Like, what am I actually seeing? What, what colors are there, you know? Like, and sometimes it's difficult to describe, or even, you know, but um, I feel like that's one of the important things that I've done as far as my training as an artist, really is how to see. And I think that's the, the biggest gift that I can share with everyone is that, um, you know, my particular way of seeing is, is unique to, and as we, you know, all of ours are, but uh, I try to bring that, you know, the, the color that I see and the compositions that interest me, that's what ends up on the panels. Um, and the color is very important, so I, I spend a lot of time mixing paint. Sometimes even more than painting. Like sometimes the mixing paint process, you know, sometimes the painting part just happens fast, like in a burst of energy. Um, and then the painting process is slow and methodical. And, um, you know, when, when I have the colors mixed, that's when, um, you know, I take a break and then come back and just kind of start painting. <laughs> I hope that answered your question. Yes? Um, so, in relation to that, that was close to what I was going to ask. Once you start painting, how long do you paint very quickly, or is it, does that come in? jewels as well because it sounds like you mix you think you process and then paint yes How, like mm -hmm. are you working on several what's your process are you working sure. on several simultaneously Do yeah that's a good question colors? with this series i worked on all of the paintings at once which is a little bit different normally i work on like five to ten paintings at a time so that i can work on um you know have have be able to switch back and forth you know oil paint takes a long time to dry so I feel like, and also I need to let things settle in my mind, like to make the right decisions, you know, kind of let things sit there. Um, and since they come together in layers, um, you know, so they, they all come together in layers, thin layers of paint, which kind of build up to optically blend um, to create this kind of, um, a good example would be like this beach painting, which is actually thin layers of, of there's actually, it kind of looks like maybe a couple of colors here, but there's actually about eight different colors that I mix together and I kind of blend. So I guess to answer your question, sometimes it does happen very quickly and sometimes it doesn't. You know, sometimes it was really kind of a drawn out process where it's like almost painful, where it's like I really am trying and for whatever reason it's not working, but when it does work, it's so amazing and it's like the best feeling. And it's like, you know, it's, it's just, uh, really, really great when it works. And these all represent paintings that I thought worked. I wouldn't show anything that I didn't, 
feel like it's working. Um, so, you know, that, um, yeah, it's kind of like it's, it's a difficult process, but then at the end, it's like so rewarding. You know, it's, it's such an amazing feeling to have like this piece that just ends up, you know, like, you know, I had a vision of what I wanted to make, and then when it happens, it's like, so that's a great, you know, great feeling. That, that piece behind you is actually one of my favorites. Um, it's just, you know, driving on the freeway, and an amazing sunset, you know, the freeway barrier, it's like, you know, I like a lot of abstract qualities in my work. Even though I'm not an abstract painter, um, I still am like a representational painter, but I love the abstract qualities that uh, exist out there in the world. You know, abstract just means simple life. That's the definition. And I, I think in my work, a lot of the um, compositions are simplified in the sense that there's very little there. So I feel like with a painting like that, with, that has very little content in a way, but a lot of color and a lot of emotional qualities that um, we, we bring a lot to a painting like that. Or at least I do. I guess I can really only talk for myself, but it's like, those kind of images are important to me because there's very little content, but at the same time, I feel a lot. You know, I feel a lot for an image like that. Um, so I love those kinds of simplified, very uh, almost uh, almost abstract, but not. You know, I'm still in the representational world because the representation, the real world, is what provides me with my inspiration. So that was kind of a long answer. <laughs> I don't know how to answer your question. Well, so my follow-up question yes. is, are there pieces that are sitting in your gallery, I mean, in your studio somewhere, that just didn't work? Or do you work them until they all work? I usually work them until they work. But it doesn't always happen that way. Um, this piece I was mentioning a little bit earlier had been in my studio for three years before I got it to work. And finally, it worked. It was supposed to be part of my first show um, at Skidmore. Didn't work, and then, you know, my painting style has changed. I kind of, um, I think a little bit differently now. I brought it back out, and I was like, this, you know, I, I'm gonna make this work. <laughs> you know? And it's like, I, I put many, many layers of paint. It's hard to tell in this lighting, but this is actually thick and textured. There's layers and layers and, and layers of paint, um, which actually it's kind of nice that you can't really see that. It's more about the, you know, this painting is titled Almost a Dream. And it's like, I, I remember this moment where it was like, it was like, it was like a dream. It was like, it's these kind of ethereal kind of colors, just barely there, you know. Um, the, the sky was so gorgeous, so, um, Yes, so sometimes they don't work. I, I really only have one painting that's in my studio that's like, I think I'm gonna make it over. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's not working. But um, I do have five additional paintings in progress right now that were originally gonna be part of the show, and they didn't make it for the show, but they're still working. You know, it was more of like a time constraint, so those paintings, I will finish them. Um, I usually do like to finish what I start. You know, if, if I'm gonna put all the effort into starting something, um, you know, there's a lot of effort that goes into the paintings before even the first dab of paint. You know, it's like the planning, the photography, the, uh, the preparing of the wood panel, um, you know, a lot of things before I even start painting. So if I commit and I'm ready to I don't know, birth this image into a painting, then it's like I, I, I usually know exactly what I'm looking for, and even though it doesn't always happen in the way that I think or want, um, usually I do finish them, but not always. <laughs> Sometimes they don't always But that's a good question. Any more questions? Yes. Okay. Uh, in the other room, there uh -huh. is another painting that interested me very much, and that was the, the moving lights that are out of focus. Yes. Now, that makes me, uh, I mean, it's just very different from everything else, and it leads me to say, was that experimental? And when, I know, I know that when you have the deadline, 
I'm glad you brought that up. So the painting he's referring to is, it's right around in the corner, it's this dark kind of night scene where it's the, it's, a, it's called freeway blur. It's the freeway lights at night, but it's, it's almost like in motion. So everything's blurry. Um, it is very different than the rest of the work. It's kind of like every show, I do like to have kind of like a wild card. You know, something that's not exactly, it doesn't exactly quite fit in, but it does to me, in my mind. But it's, and last year it was the plastic painting. You know, last year I did this painting of a big piece of heavy plastic that had the sunlight shining through it, so it kind of looked like a mountain or something, um, but it wasn't exactly like the other works. But it still fit in for me, because for me what it comes down to is my inspiration comes to, my inspiration are the beautiful things that I see all the time. You know, so it's like if I see something and it's, Beautiful, like it's it's enough for me to paint it. So yes, that is experimental. It's it's different. It's it doesn't quite fit the same. Um, it's not exactly the same as these paintings. You know, normally my paintings are very much in focus. You know, even when there's very little. You know, this painting has two tiny little palm tree heads on it. But if you look closely, they're very carefully. And they're in focus, and you know that's how most of my work is. So that painting was really difficult, actually, for me because I had to like paint things out of focus, which kind of goes against the grain of what I do, you know. So it, it was difficult, but it was um, great too. At the same time, I loved it. And like you know, at the end, I was like, "This is I love this painting," you know. So it worked out in, in a way that. Um, it was experimental, you know, it got a lot of, a lot of people were talking about it at the opening reception. Um, will I do more paintings like that in the future? I'm not sure. You know, I, 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 I don't know. Um, I don't have anything planned out like that for the future, but I, I did really enjoy it, so I would have to see, you know, I'd have to see what happens. When you do something different, mm -hmm. it, it draws attention. Sure. To, to me. Yeah. That's And, and it was, it was that for me too. You know, it, it was the wild card. Last year it was the, the plastic painting. I like to do that. You know, I like to throw in something that's a little bit different. Um, not only to keep people kind of guessing, but also to keep myself guessing. You know, I don't want to get in a, 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 I feel like I need to, sometimes I need to explore. And that painting was an exploration. Um, they all are in a sense, but that one maybe a little bit more so because it's, it was, Uncharted territory, you know, it was something new for me. So, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed painting it. It was a struggle. It was really hard to like, make things out of focus. Like, I, I really had to examine, like, see what I'm looking at. Um, and it's so different than most of my images. Any questions? Any questions? Yes. My last one. Okay. <laughs> He's like, he's no, the, the little the, one on the bottom. The little baby one. Oh, this one? No, nope. you're right. The first one. This, this, that edge. Yes. Uh, the other side on the right. Okay. There's something about that line that's really forceful. Um, can you talk sure. about that? Sure. Yeah. You know, I will actually. That's interesting. You brought that up because a lot of times um, straight lines are less interesting than a line that's. Really or, or so when I first painted this, it was very straight and kind of like perfect, you know? And then I was like looking at it and like, that's not working, like something wasn't working. So if you look closely at this line, um, I'm exaggerating, but it goes like this, the whole way down. So it's, it's like a, a, a wavy kind of line, in fact they all are. Um, none of these lines are straight, but from your distance they probably read as straight, because that's just how we see 
You know, we, we, we correct things. You know, our, our vision corrects things. But what's funny is that um, if it were perfectly straight, it wouldn't have the same feeling. It just, it was, it was feeling different. So, like, it wasn't, wasn't working for me, so I literally went in with my brush and, like, made my straight line crooked. Like, and that created more of um, something that was more interesting for me. So, you know, and then the other part of that is the color. Um, they're very closely, the shades are very, are very close, but different. So that they have a little bit of texture and, um, you know, it creates like a, that more dynamic, it feels more dynamic you know, than if it were just a solid color. Because I love doing solid colors on shades if I can get away with it. I love just, I love solid planes of color. You know, just where it's like a solid color. And sometimes I do, you know, for example, these, these trash cans in this painting. Each one of those is a solid shape. It's no variation, you know. All the variation is in the sky and the sand and the mountains, but you know, the, there are certain areas where if, if I can, I love to insert solid shapes. You know, the, the cityscape that we were talking about earlier, most of those shapes in the cityscape are solid shapes of color with no variation. You know, so if I can do that, I would. But in this case, it wasn't working. And so there, there's a little bit of highlights and then also that kind of wavy line. You'll have to look closely. It's, you know, that was a, it's interesting you brought that up because that was a real struggle for me in the studio. I wasn't, you know, it wasn't working for me until I did that, and, and also the color, I made everything more brown. There's some hints of green and gold in the leaves, but mostly these shapes are, are brown, brown and gold, you know, where the, where the color goes, or the foreground shapes. Any other questions? Thank you guys so much for listening. <laughs>